So, the beta has been announced for Battlefield 1, coming on August the 31st, a little bit earlier to Battlefield Insiders, and we know the map, Sinai Desert. This is the map in the Gamescom trailer and the live stream. It's a massive open expanse of sand and rock set in the Middle East. Small village nested up to the north, that's the infantry area, and there's a desert outpost down in the south. It is a really awesome map, especially on Conquest, and it offers players the chance to test out the air vehicles fully with that massive skybox. The land vehicles have a huge area to fight it out through the sand dunes, and as I mentioned, the infantry can go head to head in the village. Plenty of vertical gameplay and destruction to keep you happy. But there are some other things that we can look through that are going to be in the beta as well, weapons, etc. And there's a big change coming, and that one concerns the second game mode that will be available with the open beta, and that is Rush. This is a game mode that didn't feature in Battlefield Hardline, and it really wasn't well implemented in Battlefield 4. Dice LA actually went back through a lot of the maps and attempted to make them better by changing the MCOM locations over a year after the game had actually shipped. So what's different about Rush in Battlefield 1? First of all, let's look at the official description that DICE have given us. Rush is a 24-player mode where the attacking force must find and destroy the defending force's telegraph posts, which can be used to call in artillery strikes. The defenders can deny the attackers their mission by disarming explosives that they plant on the telegraph positions. Should the telegraph post be destroyed, the defenders must fall back to the next sector and protect the telegraph posts there. What's the difference? Well, actually, there are two things that I noticed. First of all, defenders now have a themed objective to hold on to. It's a telegraph post instead of just an MCOM station, which was really an explosive box. And secondly, the artillery strikes. The defenders, as long as they have the telegraph post in their control, and that's to say not armed with explosives by the attackers, they can use the telegraph posts to call in artillery strikes against the attacking team. That could be a big game changer in a mode like Rush. So when you get your chance to play this in the open beta, make sure you give your feedback about this massive change. Because at the moment, it's only been tested by DICE and really, I think it's up to the community to tell them whether this is a good change or not. The other mode in the beta, Conquest Large, has a small change to it as well. Killing someone now no longer removes a ticket from the enemy team's score, and this puts more of an emphasis on taking the objectives to win the round for your team, as that is the only way now to score points in Conquest. You have to go for those flags, and you have to try and dominate the map. Next up, in terms of weaponry, what can you expect from the beta? Well, our best frame of reference right now is to look at lots of the footage out there from the Gamescom livestream, and as it happens, I have got some screenshots. First up, the Assault. All of these weapons were in the closed alpha, so there's no new weapons here, but we do see some different variants. First of all, the MP18 SMG. It now comes in the Trench, Artillery, and Experimental variants. And the Experimental is a three-round burst fire model. You've got the Model 10 shotgun in the Heavy and Factory variants, and the Automatico SMG in the Trench, Light Infantry, and Factory variants. Sidearms, the P0A and the M1911 make a return from the closed alpha and no further have been added, so there are only two handguns that you can use in the beta. For the assault gadgets, you get the rocket gun, the AT mine, that's a new one, and the dynamite. Now, the dynamite isn't sticky in Battlefield 1, so it won't stick to an object. You'll have to throw it, run away as far as you can to try and not get hit by the blast, and it's going to make it much harder to blow up tanks if the dynamite doesn't stick to them. Melee weapons, these are the same for all classes. You've got the trench knife, the club, the spiked club, the trench mace, the hatchet, pickaxe, 
and the shovel, and the grenades as well, same for all classes. You've got the frag grenade, the gas, the impact grenade, god please help us, the incendiary grenade, the mini grenade, the smoke, and the light anti-tank grenade. The next class is the Medic. This guy runs the semi-automatic weapons. The Chelrigotti and the Mondragon make another appearance from the Alpha. This time they both come in artillery variants, and then the Chelrigotti comes in a factory variant, and the Mondragon comes as a marksman as well. This marksman variant puts a proper high-powered scope on the weapon, and it can really help you take out those long-range targets. I don't know if this blends the medic too much into the scout class, having a high-powered scope on a semi-automatic rifle, but again, this is a beta, so if you feel that that's the case, make sure you tell DICE about it when you get a chance to play. There are two new weapons coming to the class though, and they are the M1907 Winchester rifle, and it's denoted SL, and that refers to the .351 SL cartridge that the weapon used, and it comes in automatic or factory variants. That's right, a fully auto medic weapon. The French army in 1915 started to use the M1907, and the factory that was making them at the time has records to say that some of them were set to fire automatically. The other new weapon is the Selbstlader M1916, and that's developed by Mauser. It's a very accurate rifle, and in-game comes in the sharpshooter and artillery variants, and in many ways it can actually be considered as an alternative to the Mondragon, both of them being quite powerful and very accurate. As for gadgets, the medic has his standard syringe for reviving, and either the pouch or crate for healing players, and then he has grenade launchers. Not your standard grenade launcher though, don't worry, this isn't Battlefield 4, it's a rifle attachment, so you have to stick it into the barrel of your gun to fire it, and it's simply either a frag, smoke, or high explosive grenade fired from your gun, no impact explosions, they're timed, so don't worry, hopefully, nade spam shouldn't be too strong. Let's move on to the support class now, and we only see one addition here. We did have three weapons in the alpha already, and in the beta, each class has four weapons. The MG15 machine gun is the new one here. Now, I got a chance to play with this on the live stream build in one of the warm-up games, and it has a very interesting mechanic that I personally didn't think that DICE would leave in the game, but they have. The MG comes in the suppressor, or light infantry variants, in the game, with the suppressor having a 200 round magazine and a weapon optic, and the light infantry having iron sights and a 100 round magazine. That interesting mechanic though, the weapon overheats. If you fire for a long enough duration, and in my testing it was between 30 and 40 bullets, the weapon will start to slow down its rate of fire and then we'll stop firing completely. The player does a little animation with the weapon, sort of like opening or closing a flap, which resets it, and then you can fire again. It's a cool little feature, something that would have happened back then, the calling for automatic weapons hadn't really been developed, but I am surprised that DICE decided to leave that in. For the support gadgets, you've got your standard ammo pouch or crate, as you'd expect, and then you either have the high explosive gas or incendiary tripwire bombs. Basically, these are World War I claymores with various different horrid ways of hurting you. And finally, we come to the scout class. Again, like the support, he already had three weapons in the closed alpha, so only one added here, and it's the Gewehr M95. Now that sounds very similar to the Gewehr 98, the German rifle, but the M95 was developed in the Austro-Hungarian Empire in 1895, so it is very much a different weapon. The rifle was used by the Germans, the Austro-Hungarians, and the Italians during the war in different variants, but here in Battlefield 1 we have the sharpshooter, which comes with an optic, and the rifleman variant without an optic. 
Gadgets for the scout consist of the flare gun, and we saw that in the alpha, which has a spotting mechanic to it. But you now also have a flash variant, which can be fired into like a room and will flash and then dazzle your enemy. You've got the K bullets, which are the anti-armor rounds, and the spotting scope. This is simply a pair of binoculars that you can use to spot enemies. The beta will also feature the Elite classes, which are Battlefield 1's pickup classes, the Tank Hunter, the Flame Trooper, and the Sentry. If you want to learn more about those, then check out my other video on them. That's linked on the screen now. It'll give you a good breakdown. All of the tank variants, the Light, Heavy, and Land Ship will be there for you to try out, and the planes as well, the Bomber, the Attack, and Fighters. If you want me to break down those vehicles for you, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can put together a video over the weekend. So there you are, all up to date with the Battlefield 1 beta. Make sure you're signed up as a Battlefield Insider. You will get early access to the beta before August the 31st. That's the actual date when it's dropping, although it hasn't been 100% confirmed how early that early access is. It's rumored to be 24 hours. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below on all the new stuff that we'll be seeing in the beta. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.